As Matt with Low Cash Home said, I'm really enjoying this Asian long bean. I'm trying not to talk to you with my mouth full. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Matt with a little cash homestead, and <coughs> I just walked through a spider web. Ugh. Uh, since I've started building this high tunnel structure, spider webs are everywhere. Uh, I all told you that I wasn't particularly planning to plant a fall garden because I was focusing on the high tunnel. So let me show you some of the stuff we got done on the high tunnel, and then I'll show you what I've done as far as fall garden goes. Just remember, if you're subscribed to our channel, uh, this red wristband, by the way, I was not in the hospital. This is an all-access pass to uh, the St. Louis Zoo. We spent our day up in the uh, city today. And uh, it's an all-access pass to the zoo. Everything's cool. I'm not I'm not hurt. Didn't have any health problems. If you're uh, not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. If you are subscribed to the channel, thank you very much. If you like our videos, click the thumbs up. If you don't like them, click the thumbs down. And if you have any questions or comments, leave those below. Okay, let's talk about what we have, uh, what we got done. Additionally, since our last thing on the high tunnel was, uh, we have most of our end panels installed. Excuse me. It's a Coca-Cola burp right there. We have most of our end panels installed. Uh, we have our 4 by 4 posts. We put these little kickboards on here, baseboards, so I can have something to attach that to. On the bottom and pull it tight so I don't want that flopping around in the uh, in the wind. The panels are all ran long, and this is the length of the material. So you get a hundred foot roll by eight foot, and they are attached with these neo bonded washers and tech screws to the outside. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to wrap these around like so and then we'll probably put another set of tech screws in like this and then we'll put our baseboards and everything on i'll go through and pull out all the unnecessary uh screws because what actually happens is you get a piece of channel for wiggle wire that mounts onto this post and it's actually going to mount actually more up here onto this post another thing that we've done is we have all the grade because of the grade changes both on both axes here, what we've actually done is I've come through and marked the elevations for our ribbon boards, which is where our channels and wiggle wires are going to attach. Uh, and that is going to give me the full stretch of the greenhouse plastic. So with any luck, if I did all the math right, uh, we won't be stretching or we won't be trimming down any of the greenhouse film. With the exception of these end panels here and these are all basically hung and you just need to stretch them out and wrap them a little bit the roll-up doors are installed there is finish work to do on the roll-up doors but according to the instruction manual all that should be done after the structure and all the film and everything has been installed there we have uh, our yellow uh, baker scaffold that we've been using for for this build and then we have our orange baker scaffold that we've been using for the build as well. Ooh, I'm going to go pick this. This is going to be good in tonight's dinner. We'll get that purple bell pepper out of there. That'll be good. Okay, let's talk about uh, fall garden. I said I wasn't planning much of a fall garden because I wanted to, had to focus on getting the side tunnel up. But we did put in some carrots. And these carrots are spaced approximately four inches. I did not use pelletized seed with this. But what we did do is we added a uh, bunch of cocoa core and, and uh, perlite to this box to top it off. We topped off all of our carrot seed with sand because I'm not using pelletized seed. And uh, I did manage to get through the whole box. As I said in the previous video, I wasn't sure if I was going to get through the whole box with the seed I had, but I did. And with them being on the drip tape, they're doing quite well, even though I do spray them. I just basically spray them in the morning give them a quick spray and then I'll turn the drip tape on kind of in the evening and let them get some of their moisture that way I'm gonna have to seriously thin and when I thin I just I don't pluck anything I just take a pair of scissors and I snip them off we're gonna let them get a little bit bigger before we thin um, and one of our objectives is you know we grow uh, these watermelons are on the way out but I'm gonna take this watermelon here that'd be a good after dinner uh, treat we'll take that watermelon these are these are bush sugar babies if i can get ah, oh, it's bigger than my hand okay so i'm gonna set that over here i'm just gonna put it right here 
and we'll let it sit on the edge of that carrot bed for now. Okay, and then I have this purple bell pepper that I have in my pocket. We'll put that there. And then, uh, so we got that on the ends as well. And we have all the elevations and everything figured out here. And one of the things that I'm really, really trying to do is, is I told you before that I don't really take gardens down. I just wait for them to die out. And as they die out, then I take out individual things. And that box was our Royal Burgundies. Now, my bell peppers have been doing quite well. You can see I have a nice thick woody stem there. I'm not going to take these bell peppers out. I'm hoping we grow bell peppers like they're an annual. They're not really an annual. They're a multi-year perennial. They're not forever perennial, but I think you can get five to seven years out of them in the right climate. So I'm hoping that getting this high tunnel completed will keep them alive so I don't have to start all over. <clears throat> We got a nice fat bell pepper there. We're gonna go ahead and take that. That's gonna go good in tonight's tacos. All right. And so basically, I just <coughs> come through each evening and, and pick. And I think we're good on that one. All right. So those are gonna go well in tonight's dinner. All right. We'll add that to our stuff there. So uh, let's just take a quick look. At the high tunnel, we're gonna just give it a, give it a nice shot. So uh, we have five of the six. Is there a reason you're following me around? Uh, I was gonna ask you a couple questions when you're done. What's your question? I'm gonna ask you about the zoo and everything. About the what? The zoo and everything when you're done. Oh yeah, we can talk about the field trip later. I'll be in in a minute, and I'll start on dinner. Okay. Okay, so th this trellis is starting to come out. So um, I still got some. I mean. I do a lot of stuff polyculture, and what I did here is I wove tomatoes, Asian long beans. I got an itch on my hand, excuse me, blocking the shot there. I wove uh, tomatoes, Asian long beans, Kentucky climbers, um, and, well, several different types of tomatoes, actually. And I just wove them all into that. Now, when I wove this one, I wove cucumbers. Uh, Kentucky climbers, Asian long beans, and tomatoes into this one. You can see on the top, we've got lots of little yellow pear tomatoes that are still very, very active. And then same thing over here. I don't know if you see that giant bunch of Kentucky climbers right there, but we did that as well. So, you know, if you're a companion planter, then you can make really, really... Uh, you can take full advantage of this trellising system because you can load these boxes down with climbing plants and just and, and when it comes to tomatoes i did start to clip them but as they started to grow i realized i don't really need to when i can just kind of weave them in through the cattle panel all right this is our aztec red box which i got nothing out of this year which i'm still kind of baffled by that because i usually do pretty productive with the uh, aztec red spinaches but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sow some either spinach or lettuce in here. I haven't decided yet. Um, probably going to go with a blend of lettuces in this bed. And then in this bed with our New Zealand. You can see the New Zealand's kind of scattered. I started the New Zealand in, in little pots. New Zealand's hard to start. But it's perennial, so it'll keep coming back um, as long as we don't kill the plant. Uh, by harvesting too much off of each plant and we'll get some more new zealands when they're available and and put those in there but for now we're going to put in bloomsdale long-standing spinach and then we're going to put a mix of lettuces in our aztec red box the aztec red did pretty much nothing this year not sure why but we're going to put some some lettuces in the box that has the aztec red all right, so let me uh, get started uh, over here. I have, this is my bucket of fertilizers. Um, the bulk material in there is a 10, 10, 10. And then I have some smaller bags of other stuff. I am gonna use probably a 12, 10, 5 on the spinaches and a 12, 10, 5 on the lettuces, which I have a small bag of um, organic uh, fertilizer in there that's 12, 10, 5. That was, it, organic fertilizers are usually a lot weaker in the NPK numbers, but I did find one that was a 12, 10, 5, so we're going to use that 
in these two beds. This is Matt with Low Cash Homestead. Thank you very much. Have a good day. All right, let me show you real quick. I'm pretty um, easy about the way that I seed spinach. This is a handful of spinach, and this is how I seed it. And I just throw it out there. I don't really um, mess with it a whole lot. Okay, so here's another handful, and I'll just toss that out from this end. And then I'll put a little um, coating of some dirt on there and water it down. All right, so we're going to do the lettuce box next, and we're going to do one package of Black Seeded Simpson, uh, one package of Red Velvet, one package of Red Salad Bowl, one package of Four Seasons, one package of Sylvia, and one package of Giant Caesar. Is that a high-density planting? Yes, I like to do it that way, because then I can just come through and cut a section, and I've got my salad already, to, already made. It's ready to go. Um, these, some of them have different maturity times, 45 days, 55 days, 50 days, 55 days. These, uh, that's a long one. That's the Sylvia's 70 days and the giant Caesar is 70 days, but these are all either organic or heirloom. Um, they're either, uh, some are burpee and a lot of them are burpee and some of them are fairy moors. But Ferry Morris is plantation products. We've discussed that before. And, well, burpee's burpee. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm going to toss those out pretty much in the same way you saw me toss the lettuces out. And that's basically the same way I tossed out the fertilizer. Take a handful, toss it out from one end. Go to the other end, take a handful, toss it out. I'm going to do the same thing with these lettuces. This is Matt with a little cash homestead. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Oh, thank you. Another little cherry red tomato. This is a super sweet 100. Oh, so good. Oh, that's a husky red. It's a little bit... That's a husky red. It's a little bit bigger than the uh, super sweets. Ah, had, a spy, had a spider string on it. Ah, let me wipe that off. Okay, these are the super sweets right here. These little super sweets are so fantastic. Uh, if you haven't seen it before... Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's our Asian long bean. You stretch this out, it'll be about 18 inches, this particular one. I picked the acorn squash, bud. Are you looking for some more? Yeah. You can look. There might be some in there. I don't think I found every single one of them. Oh, uh, yeah. Once the squash bugs come, yeah, that's a losing battle. Uh, I don't use pesticides or herbicides, so... If you see any more acorn squash, feel free to grab them. <clears throat> my old low cash home, so my son's over in the secondary garden uh, picking up uh, acorn squash and stuff like that. I just walk through another spider web. It's crazy. Ah, yeah. But this is exactly what I was talking about. About Oh, wow. Let's see if I can get that on video. That thing is glistening. Uh, I don't think you're going to see it real well, but this is what I was talking about. I started clipping the tomatoes. And it turns out you don't need to. Not with this cattle panel trellis design. You just weave them in. So, you know, um, I don't ever, ever, ever take tomatoes down. My son just shoved a yellow pear tomato in my mouth. He's got a whole handful of them right here. So, there you go. So, I don't ever uh, take tomato plants down. Like, pretty much never. I let them, I just let them run out. And in my... So many in my like in my climate, I can have tomatoes sometimes until the end of November, because the Midwest weather and Missouri weather is, you know, it, it can sometimes it can be warm till November, sometimes not. So I never take tomato plants down. I just wait for them to die. As Matt with Low Cash Home said, I'm really enjoying this Asian long bean. I'm trying not to talk to you with my mouth full. Thank you very much. Have a great day.